Welcome, I'm Wes, the Sewing Machine Repair Guy, and this is part two of a five-part series. This is the course on how to repair sewing machines. This is perhaps the most important episode of the series. We're gonna learn how to clean a machine. Whether you're here just to learn how to fix your sewing machine, or you're here to learn how to fix all different kinds of sewing machines, this video is very important for you. As you'll see through this video, Cleaning a machine is not just cleaning a machine. You're also getting acquainted with the machine. We gotta check out this patient and see what's going on with it. Also, if you've never seen a machine like this before, this step helps you to get acquainted with that machine so that you can understand the different parts of the machine so that you can tell what you need to fix. This gives us time to examine the patient and see how it operates, all the while looking for maybe a potential problem with the sewing machine. I thought that I was gonna make a 10 to 15 minute video on how to clean a sewing machine. Well, this sewing machine had a different idea. For this video, I chose a machine that's been sitting on the shelf for a few months. It was used by some unskilled workers to make masks early in the um, uh, crisis. This machine was used to make thousands of masks and I'll tell you that by the end of that, the person that used it was not unskilled anymore. This machine turned out to be perfect for this video. You're gonna come right along with me as we go in and we clean this machine and we look for maybe some problems and maybe some clues that will lead us to the answer as to why this machine actually wasn't working perfectly when it was put away. So here are some of the tools I use when I'm cleaning a machine. I have some of these little brushes and you can find these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, I have three brushes. I, use, I just use different sizes based on what size the little area I'm trying to get into is. And uh, these are nice. They're anti-static br brushes. So they work for electronic machines and for uh, mechanical machines. And then I've got this little bottle brush. This is the smallest one of the kit. So the kit comes with all different sizes. And I have used those. It depends on the machine if I need them or not but I do tend to use the smallest one when getting into the upper tension assembly. And then the cleaner that I use typically is isopropyl alcohol. And I just get this at you know, your major big box stores. Here I have a spray bottle that's I've kind of recycled. This, this was a uh, conditioner and I just use it for alcohol. So reduce, reuse, recycle. These are really the major tools that I use. The other things that I use, I have a vacuum uh, and I also use an air compressor for some air. And I know it's a little controversial. We'll talk about the air when we get to that point. Some people say use air, some people say don't. And uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. So let's get started. This is a machine that uh, is a machine that I own and it's pretty dirty because it got used to make a bunch of masks a while back. It got, uh, uh, I, I let someone borrow it who was making a ton of masks. So we are gonna get into cleaning this machine that should be pretty dirty. This is our first step when we're going to look at a sewing machine and see what's wrong with it. And cleaning is something that you have to do to a machine when you're trying to troubleshoot. Dirt, grease, old oil, things like that that are in there will keep the machine from operating the way it should. So we wanna make sure we get it all clean um, and also don't forget about all the lint that's in there. I've seen where the lint in a machine has been matted so much that it basically looks like a piece of felt when I pull it out and it's hard. Here's the deal, when you're working on sewing machines and you get a sewing machine into your shop, or if you're at home and you're working on your sewing machine, this is the first time that you've opened that type of machine. There are so many different types of machines. It seems like everyone I work on is different. And I get a lot of questions online. Well, I have this specific type of sewing machine. Can you tell me how to do X or Y or Z? Well, the answer is I may not know the answer for your machine. A lot of these machines, I don't know what's inside this machine until I take it apart. And that's why in the series, we're gonna go through the basics of the sewing machine so you can apply it to all different types of sewing machines. So in this case, this one is not a common sewing machine and that's why I wanted to bring it up for this cleaning. 
so that we can see some of the differences between this and some of the other machines that we saw a while back. So this is a Husqvarna and uh, it's, it's a computerized machine and it's from the 90s. So it's got some older technology in here and it's good, good to see. So seeing the tension on between zero and one, that's showing me there may be an issue in here either with our bobbin or it could be the way, maybe the person didn't have it threaded correctly. You, you never know because this was used by someone who was not um, uh, an experienced sewer. So there's no, there's no uh, telling why that was on zero, but that could be indicative of a problem with tension, either upper or lower. So it's something to look for. What else do we want to look for when we're first looking over a machine? You want to look for ease of movement. Does the machine move well? You can take out your bobbin. See what the bobbin looks like. So a lot of problems with sewing machines come down to how it was threaded or is the, was the bobbin wound correctly. So I know an inexperienced user used this machine. The bobbin actually looks pretty good. This, uh, some machine, machines, especially this one as well, they wind differently than a lot of other machines. This one, you gotta go through the needle in order to wind the bobbin to get the tension that you need on the bobbin. Now that we've kind of looked around our machine, we've kind of familiarized ourselves with it, we're gonna start taking it apart. This is another thing. Every machine is different and you, you kind of have to learn as you go on this thing. Uh, if you get stuck on a machine, there are these things that are called um, service manuals. So you can get a service manual for a machine. It also tells you the different measurements. And that's a good thing to have. Uh, this video series is gonna try and guide you without having to need a service manual for every machine. But as far as taking apart the machine, start with the screws that you can see. Okay, I pulled out two screws. I'm not seeing any others around here. Some, uh, some machines you gotta take knobs off in order to get to screws or to get pieces of plastic apart. And then we will lay it down. And undoubtedly there are screws on the bottom holding this thing together. Okay. Got a little screw right there. Almost missed him. Only back to the front screw on the inside machine, which is kind of neat because um, you know, this is a Husqvarna from the 90s. There's a newer Husqvarna that worked on the same way. Two screws on the top on the front. Um, so they kind of get it similar to the ears. And making sure there's not a screw in here holding this and not, it just pops out. And then, okay, right now I'm having trouble with this. There's a lip underneath here. So here, yeah, so you can just, I just push on it and it's able to get past the other lip right there. That's what was underneath here. Keep it from moving. So that's that one. Okay, and then it's a computerized machine, so we have a room table. Now that I've got the covers off, I want to look around the machine. I want to move, turn this while I'm looking at the machine because now I can follow, see if I've got any threads coming off up here in the operations. You can see it looks kind of fuzzy down here. It's got a little beard. Electronics look pretty good. Nothing looks charred or like it's getting hot. We do have capacitors and these are, they're looking pretty good. Capacitors will bulge if they're getting bad. As you can see, I've got all these remnants from all this fabric just inside here. So we may have an issue with tension on this. There's this thing down here. Let's, uh, I'll bring you in a little closer. All down in here, really dirty and up here. So I've got a needle in there still. And what I'll do is I'll turn it while watching that needle and I'll get an idea of where that hook intersects with the needle. 
because this is where your timing takes an effect and you want to just take a look at that and we'll see that a little bit later on as well. So these are all things you can look at while you're doing the cleaning portion. And look around, is there anything just messed up? Is there anything that doesn't make sense? Like a string hanging out from the tensioner, from the upper tension assembly. Oh yeah. So this was actually inside the tensioner and that's a big blob. So we actually get into the cleaning portion. I wanna get my vacuum out and my brush and I'm going to start at the top, work my way down and just vacuum this machine out. Clean it out. So we got some strings that are tied up underneath the hook. So if you look right here, this is where we have a, a wad of of thread. So I've loosened this set screw here so I can move this up a little bit, move that hook up. And then now hopefully get in there a little bit easier to pull these threads out of there. Because it appears to be a bunch of threads in there. You didn't know when we were getting into cleaning a sewing machine that we were going to find this much junk in the sewing machine. You thought I was just going to show you some random, already clean, pretty looking sewing machine. Nay, nay, says sewing machine repair guy. You get the full experience. Now when I clean a machine, my goal is not to get every last bit of grease off of the machine. My goal is just to get big gobs of things, dirt and grease off the machine. Because after all, we're going to put more grease back. If the grease that's coming off of there is good and greasy, then there's really not that much of a problem with it. If it is hard, then there is a problem with it and that grease needs to come out. Okay, we are going to tighten this back up. It should have a little springiness to it. Too much. Should turn pretty easily. It does. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm continuing on with the cleaning, looking in different other little spots, looking for these sort of things.
you just get in the nooks and crannies. By the way, this is another tool I didn't tell you about earlier using Q-tips. You can use regular Q-tips or I use these. Like I said, I'm not trying to get this perfect. Just trying to get a majority of it out of there. Okay, so let's look at how much thread was pulled out of that. Do you think that that had something to do with the operation of this machine? All this thread being stuck inside of it? In the gears? Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. That had something to do with the operation of this machine. And this wasn't even one brought to me by a customer. This was just one that someone borrowed and used for the betterment of humanity. Yeah, the funny part is I started this video thinking I was gonna do an easy cleaning with just a bunch of dust in the machine. All right. So let's go back through our steps. First thing we did was we looked over the machine. We did our once over, we scanned over the whole machine and we looked throughout everything to try and find problems with the machine. Just our basic overview, not really in depth, but like an overview. How dirty is it? Is there anything wrong with it? We had little pieces of thread sticking out of the bottom there. We had thread sticking out of the upper tension assembly. So we looked at all that uh, and then we got out our brush. We used our brush and we used our vacuum and we vacuumed, we brushed everything and we vacuumed all the dust around the whole machine. Okay, that was step two. Step three, we did some more mechanical cleaning. So that's where we got our tweezers out. That's where we got our Q-tips out. And we got all the nastiness and stuff that was down in here um, that we couldn't get to with just a brush and a vacuum. The next step, this is the controversial step because some people disagree with me, but I believe that uh, using air, compressed air to clean a machine helps. I think it's good. Here's the deal. People say that, you know, you're gonna drive dirt deeper into the machine. Well, I am deep in the machine. If I look in this machine, I can see all the parts. I am deeper in the machine. This, this is going to help me to get the last pieces of dust that I couldn't reach and get them out of there. If it drives it deeper in the machine, the machine's still gonna work. I've got a majority of this stuff out. I just wanna try and blow out some more of that dirt. So we're gonna give that a try next. Okay, and we are almost done with our cleaning portion. The one thing that I haven't done yet, and some of you may have noticed, is I haven't actually cleaned the upper tensioner assembly yet. So when I do this, I like to raise the presser foot because that tensioner uh, loses tension at that point. And it's easier to get cleaning tools inside there. So you want to get between the plates on your tension assembly. I think you can see it in there. And so we have the tensioner and then if you look when I raise the presser foot, see how the tensioner shifts over? And then you want to get on both sides of this long piece here because if it's a dual thread machine, thread can go either way. See, look at that, I already got something out of there. So we're just going through and we're getting both sides of this thing. I hope you can see this. and making sure we got all the nastiness out of there. And then I'll use my air, just give it a blow, just to make sure we got it. This machine is clean, at least on the inside. Next step after cleaning is we get our good old friend, the TriFlow oil. We get our grease. We're going to do a little oiling on all the 
Every piece of metal that moves against another piece of metal needs oil. So up here, you have a, a shaft going through here that needs oil. You have one going through here that needs oil. You've got one going through there. And then your needle bar, top and bottom. And then um, you've got a bearing up here and a bearing over here. So the upper shaft is gonna have two bearings. The lower shaft's gonna have two bearings. You wanna make sure you get those. And then any parts, moving parts down here. So we're gonna go ahead and do this now. So we used our tri-flow, link in the description below. If you want to help out the channel, you can buy some and it will help out the channel. If you don't, don't. So when I clean plastic pieces, it's the same thing. All right, are you ready to put this machine back together? Because I am. When I clean these out, I use high pressure air. Um, you can disassemble them, but a lot of times it's not worth the effort. Um, you just gotta make sure the tension is good when you're done. So I just blew it out and it looks much better than it did. And you just want to check your tension and make sure that's... So you want to test your tension. That's a good tension right there. Now, this is either the first or last step. It depends on uh, when I remember to do it. I don't care how long it's been, could have been five minutes. If you get a new machine, you take that needle out and throw it away. Whatever was in there doesn't need to be in there anymore. Put a brand new needle in that machine. Clean a machine, replace a needle every time. Yeah. 
So if, if you remember, our upper tension was set on zero. I've just moved it to the middle. So about four is in the middle. And we're gonna see how this thing sews. Right out of the box. Okay. That is not a bad stitch. Let's give it a try with a zigzag. If you're gonna have problems, it's gonna pop up during your zigzag stitch. Yeah, I didn't realize the foot that was on there was a gathering foot. So it actually did what it's supposed to do. Okay, so that's not bad. I could tighten up the upper, which I lowered, so now we could put it back on four. And I think that that would end up being a beautiful stitch without any skip stitches. Very smooth machine, nice to operate. I like it. Somebody gave me this machine a long time ago because somebody gave me this machine a long time ago because it didn't work. And the reason I used it for this video is because the way I fixed this machine was I cleaned it. And it worked after that. So I figured I would uh, bring it back out, especially since it was really dirty, and show you how to clean a sewing machine with this machine. I'm gonna take this time to thank my patrons. At this point, we have three people who have chosen to support the channel through small monthly donations. Many of the things done on this channel are not possible without the help of the patrons like these three people. I'd like to personally thank all three of you, Master Mechanic, Jean, and Repair Apprentices, Kishore and Victoria. Thank you so much. You're really helping to support this channel and help me make the best content that I can for you. Jean got to see an early release of this video and got to provide some feedback to me to make this video better for all of you. If you want to be a supporter just like them, take a look at the link below for Patreon. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Now that we've learned how machines work and we've learned how to clean machines, the next three topics are going to be tensions, timing, and troubles. This video was the perfect segue to go into the next video on tension and how important tension is for a machine to operate. So we're gonna learn what tension is, why it needs to be set correctly, and what kind of things can happen to a machine when it's not set correctly. And then we'll take a look at how to adjust your tensions. And I'll tell you, I really had no idea that that machine was like that before starting that video. It turned out perfect. Thanks for watching. Welcome, I'm Wes, the Sewing Machine Repair Guy, and this is part two of the pi... 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 pi...